In this video, we will discuss the various map layers and additional display and navigational tools found within the Johnson County Mapping application. All of these layers and tools are located along the left-hand side and are organized in an accordion-style interface. The first section here includes all of your visible map layers. They're categorized by type and have subgroups of layers within those categories. You'll notice at some at full extent, some of the layers are not available to be turned on as they're scale dependent and you must actually zoom in before you'll be able to see those or make them visible on the map. So we'll go through each of these by category. Your first one's parcels, which would include things like your actual parcel boundaries, your address points, land use zoning, and then we actually give you actual just parcel outlines. You can click the plus sign next to any layer to actually view the legend. So in this case, it's going to show you what type of parcel it would be if it's platted, um, a vertical parcel if it's unplatted, things like that. Now if you look under zoning, again, that's also going to give you a legend here of what, how, what color it represents, what type of zoning. Your second one here is flood zones. And if you click that open, it's going to give you the information there about the different types of flood zones and what their designation is. Planometrics includes things like building footprints, elevation, contours, and then our other planometrics are things like your fences, retaining walls, um, edge of pavement, water features, and vegetation. The school layers are going to be your school districts, your public schools, and then your elementary, middle, and high school attendance boundaries. The administrative layers include things like your commissioner districts, your state representatives, voting precincts, and city wards. Your other layers are your city boundaries, your sections, plats and subdivisions, traffic counts, soils, recreation, which would be things like trails, parks, golf courses, things like that. Um, also included in that one is transportation, which includes um, bike and pedestrian routes, your railways, the Joe routes are in here, as well as your street center lines. And then landmarks includes your hospital schools, private schools, we've got post offices, libraries, and then your law enforcement type offices. And the last one here is utilities, and under here is basically going to show you your uh, Johnson County Waste Water Sewer Lines and Districts, the service areas for various types of utilities, and then monuments and section corners. If you're a My Ames user with access to the queue, um, when you log in, you would actually notice a few additional layers under the utilities that you would have access to. We're actually going to do a video regarding um, the utility layers and a potential replacement for Q in another video, so I would encourage you if you do have Q access to check out that video down in the help section. The next thing you'll notice here is layer transparency, and let me turn on a few layers here to actually show you how this works. If I zoom in on my map here a little bit, if I turn on like zoning, and let's say about parcels, like I said, I can only turn on one of those. But if I did parcels and if I did flood zones, and then, you know, my base map is still under there somewhere. So this transparency works by allowing you to actually adjust that so that you can see your base map underneath whatever layers that you have turned on. So in this case, if I want to see the base map, I would drag my transparency all the way over to zero or 100% transparent. And then as I want to see those layers that I've turned on on top of that base map, I can drag that transparency closer to the zero percentage. So that's how that works. Your next one here is your Ames imagery. If you click that checkbox, it's going to turn on the 2010 ortho photography. I'll give that a second to load. And so you can actually see it's underneath my layers here. So again, this would be a good example for the layer transparency. In this case, I want to be able to see that ortho imagery, so I'm going to drag my transparency over so that I can actually see the imagery there underneath that layer. The imagery history slider bar allows you to actually transfer or cycle through our images that we have available. Now at Ames, we actually offer um, images from 1941 up to 2010. So if you drag through this imagery slider bar, the first one you're going to get is our 1941 imagery. And up here, it's going to tell you which current year you're actually viewing. And as you drag it across, you'll be able to see all the various years that we have available. So there's 1954, 1994, 
and so on as you go across all the way up to the 2010. And the image transparency slider works the same way as the layer transparency. So in this case, if I want to lighten up that imagery and actually see the base map underneath it, I can drag that transparency forward and back until I get what I want so that I can actually see the layers that are underneath that imagery that I have turned on. And the reset map is actually going to take you back to full extent, but it's going to leave those layers turned on that you had on. So in this case, I had imagery and flood zone, so those are still turned on. But the reset map will actually take you back out to full extent. So that covers the first section here of layers. Underneath that, you've got a few other navigational and display tools. The themes layer actually allows you to view various themes of layers that would so that you can turn on multiple layers at a time. So let me zoom in here on a section to where I might be able to show you what some of these look like. And it might draw a little quicker. Your land records, if you hover over any one of these, it's actually going to show you the layers that are available within that particular theme. So your land records theme includes property lines, property annotation, address points, and building outlines. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer here since that one's got some more detailed information in it. If I hit that land records and give it a second to draw, these do take just a second because they are turning on a lot of layers at a time. metrics there we go if I turn on my planometric layers and I hover over that it's going to give me building outlines elevation contours spot elevation edge of pavement water features so you can actually see when I did that it turned on all of those planometric layers and that'll work for any of these so if you want to scroll through these, like your recreation is going to turn on your parks, your golf courses, and your bike and pedestrian trails. It's just kind of a quicker way to turn on a group of layers without having to turn on each one individually if there's something specific that you're looking for. The tools is a series of actual what we used to call advanced features in the original online mapping system. And so these actually, you've got four available to you here. You've got zoom to alternate map which if you, highlight, if you click on that, it's going to open up your options. It actually takes your current extent that you're looking at and zooms you out to an alternate way to view this map. So we'll take you out to either Bing Maps or Google Maps, and then you've got the option if you want to look at their bird's eye or their street view. So if I were to click on the Bing Maps one here, it's going to open up a new window in Bing Maps and take me to the actual area that I was looking at in Johnson County online mapping application and show that to me using Bing. Same thing with the Google one, it'll just take you out to the Google Maps and show you that same location. Zoom to feature is still in the work, so when you click on that you're going to get a little warning that says it's still, it's not quite ready. Um, but like I said, this application is in beta and we will be rolling this out and new features are being added all the time, so that one is still in the works. The zoom to coordinates gives you an option to enter a latitude and longitude, so if you know a specific Latin long that you want to search for, you can enter those, hit go and it's going to zoom your map to that specific point. The metadata data link actually opens up our website with the metadata that we have available and gives you information about that. And then your help section here actually provides you with the videos. So you'll find this video there, you'll find right now there's just the introduction video but there will be one coming for the toolbar and then as well as this one and one for Q and the utility layers eventually. If you're logged in, if you have a My Aims that log in, so I'm going to go ahead and log in over here and show you one other thing that you have available. If I log in, it's going to refresh this. It actually didn't sign me in because my password wasn't right. Let me go ahead and log in here, sign in. Once it refreshes, you're going to notice I have a couple of other options. 
The advanced layers is still coming, and that's currently only available to the AIMS internal staff while we're testing it. But other AIMS used, my AIMS users with accounts actually do have this search owner option. And what this allows you to do is actually search for a property based on a specific owner. So in this case, I can enter an owner name, and we'll pick on George Brett because we like to pick on him. And it's actually got a type ahead feature here and lets you select. So if you type in a last name or a partial name, it's going to bring back anything that would be a potential match. So in this case, I can select George, hit search, and it's going to actually take me out to the property that he owns. So that's how the search owner works. And you can actually keep it at your current zoom level or keep your map extent if I had done that when I was in there. But that covers everything that you would find over here on the left hand side from your layers to your themes to some additional navigational tools like your um, zoom to alternate map, zoom to coordinates, and things like that. Again, I do encourage you to check out the other videos that you would find on here in the help section. As I mentioned, there will be one coming for the toolbar. This video will be out there as well as one coming for the utility layers and the queue for those queue users that would need additional information on the utilities.